What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian, right out of Oklahoma City. I got my co-host, Ava Gore, joining me. She is on the road right now, but she has made the show. So thank you for joining tonight, Ava. Mm -hmm. And then we have Zach, and he is from the band If Not For Me. I say it like no one can read the bottom of the screen. It's right there. (laughs) So anyways, what's up, man? Are you having a good uh, pre-Thanksgiving, I guess? I am. I just got off work and relaxing now. It is nice. I, I do want to wish everybody, before I forget, to have a happy Thanksgiving for those who celebrate a happy Turkey Day. Uh, that is tomorrow. So I know lots of people have lots of things to do tonight, getting food uh, prepared and uh, getting ready to have to deal with family tomorrow. So, so oh do, boy. I, I got to ask, I do kind of want to talk since it is the night before, right before Thanksgiving. Does anybody have, or Zach, particularly you, do you have any uh, Thanksgiving traditions that you've had, I guess, since since you've been doing Thanksgiving as an adult? Uh, personally, I don't, other than just eating a lot of food till I can't walk. <laughs> yeah, I used to be hungover on Thanksgiving, and not anymore. That, 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 stopped a, that stopped a while ago. Oh, no more? No, you got kids and you got responsibilities, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I get that, yeah. <laughs> And the older you get, the more uh, the more hangovers kind of suck. So, all right, the band, if not for me, you guys, if I'm not mistaken, are from Pennsylvania. Yep, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg area. Right on, man. So, how, when when the band start? Tell us how you guys got started. Uh, the band itself has probably started a really long time ago, but this uh, this lineup, which we consider the the actual start, was about 2018. So we've been around a few for years. a few years, yeah. So when you say this lineup now, so was the band around before you joined or uh, is like this like the main lineup? This has been like um, all of the releases that we've done have been with this lineup. But the, the band itself has been around for a long time, probably uh, close to eight to ten years. But um, oh, wow. we don't really talk about that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to bring that up right now. <laughs> So so they made so they made the bass player do the show and they're like, hey man, you, you got it's it. It's okay, it's I know on, enough. We can we can do on, this. It's on you tonight. It's on you tonight. <laughs> so when did the band get you guys are you guys signed to Theoria? Is that how you say it, Theoria Records? Yeah, Theoria, yep. And how did that happen, man? Uh well the person who runs it, Cody, is actually a good friend of ours. He plays in another local band around in this area. Okay. Uh, their name is Ascent Like Wolves. They're very cool, very good band. Um, he just gr- grinded really hard for uh, by getting connections, and you know he set up his label, and we needed help shopping stuff and getting stuff out there. And he's we trust him a lot, so it was kind of just like a no brainer to let him, you know, do this stuff, see how it goes, help help us get you know relevant again. Because after COVID, we took such a or during COVID, we had such a long hiatus. Um, mm-hmm. So just trying you know, find somebody we trust. We value that more than like a, a big label. Cause uh, we were on standby records for the EP, but I um, saw that. Yeah. They were not very uh, receptive about stuff. And, you know, it, we never really knew what they were doing. You know, it's much nicer to just work with somebody who you trust and you can hit up whenever, and they're going to get back to you. And so far he's been doing a great job. Um, our numbers have been going up. We're pretty happy. So. And uh, how long ago was, uh, was it that you got signed to Theoria? I believe it's been maybe like four or five months. It hasn't been too long. Also, yet. fairly recent. Yeah, we, we, they, he just put out our second single, and third one's coming out next month. So maybe a okay. few months. Yeah. You guys got great. Uh, I was looking at your social media today. You guys got great social media numbers, man. A lot of Spotify <laughs> listeners. Good on good on Facebook. Uh, I, I didn't check your Instagram, but I would assume it numbers are pretty good there too. Has the record label helped you guys out at all with growing your numbers or is that just all organic from just your fans that you've had from 2018 and even before that still follow? Yeah. I mean, a lot of the streams uh, definitely uh, we had them before we joined Theoria, but um, he has helped with the monthly listeners and obviously anything for the songs that he's releasing, he's doing killer job getting us plays and listens and stuff. Um, you know, it's really just a, 
a lot of it is the playlist game and, you know, just getting those numbers up. So for us to be in a spot where we were doing nothing for so long and to come mm-hmm. back and still, you know, be re- receptive well to people or received well, you know, is nice. So um, did, did you at all ever for a second think like while COVID was thick in it, right? Like it was in the middle of the mix. Like I knew that I didn't want to go freaking dude. I had friends that their wives were nurses or even a friend that was a nurse. And I was like, dude, I ain't going to your house, bro. Like, there's no way I'm going to your house at all. Like, I remember one of my friend, one of my friend's girlfriends actually is a nurse, and we had we had a band at the time, and uh, she brought him Taco Bell, and I looked at that Taco Bell like it was all covered in COVID. I was like, no, I'm just gonna go home. In fact, the band's over. I'm done. So, like, was there ever a time where you thought that is the band still gonna stick around, even at like, like, were you worried about that at all, or did you guys stay in, in tight communications? I don't think we were ever worried about the band not working out, but we, we did not talk a whole lot between the band and we, we did barely ever see each other, maybe like one or two times. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, it was never on the table to stop. It was just kind of like, well, I guess we just have to wait to release stuff, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And when things got back rolling, we were super excited to, you know, finally play and release again. We're super stoked that we can do that now. And uh yeah, during that time was like everything on hold or were you guys like writing on your own or whatever yeah, a lot of writing i think a lot of i think we were all just kind of in a weird spot too mentally where it was just like we were burnt out from the previous year of touring and stuff mm-hmm. and, you know we were shopping the record trying to figure out you know who are we gonna team up with to release this and you know that wasn't working out so well at the time. So it was a lot of factors. We didn't necessarily want to go dark and not release, but it just kind of felt right. Um, yeah. Keep it going. How long have you been playing the bass, man? Um, well, truthfully, I started as a guitarist. Um, I'm kind of, I kind of just play bass because that is the, the role that I need to fill. But um, <laughs> I've been playing bass probably for like five, six years now. I do what? enjoy it a lot. Okay, and Sam, Sam, uh, my producer says, lie, Sebastian, you were licking toilet seats to catch COVID. I was not, I was so scared of COVID. I was definitely not licking toilet seats. But if I wanted to catch COVID, I probably wouldn't have licked toilet seats either. <laughs> Back up to what you said, and not talking about licking toilet seats. Um, I can totally relate to being a guitarist first and playing the bass because that's the role that you have to fill. And to be honest, for some strange reason, I always thought that I wouldn't really like the bass, but I actually love it like a lot. Yeah, I have definitely learned to appreciate it. And now I do love it. I mean, it is really fun. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. I'm very used to it now. So it just feels comfortable. To me. Um, but yeah, right. I would say it's easier to probably learn ba- bass first than guitar. So, like, going from guitar to bass is probably, like, super – it's probably not hard at all, right? Like, if you play guitar, natural. can't you play bass? Yeah. Yeah, just – especially if you're doing like core stuff, it's like, you know – Yeah. What, Ava? I, I just said pretty, pretty much. I mean, like, it's slightly different. So, like, the more advanced stuff is a little different. But basically, yes. <laughs> yeah basically, basically yeah dude let's talk about some of your shows man because you guys have opened up for some pretty cool bands i saw you guys open up for ice nine kills august burns red yeah. um and and some and some other bands man do you have like a favorite show that you've played um with one of these artists that you shared the stage with definitely probably the august burns red christmas show um those shows are always massive and just a lot of fun. All of our, it's local to us. It's right, it's right here in Lancaster, which is like an hour from us. So all our friends are there. It's just a really good time. And obviously that band is fantastic. You know, they, Oh yeah. An amazing show. So that's probably my favorite personally. Um, what about tours? What kind of tours have you guys been on? Have you done, have you guys gone on like a, like a nationwide tour or overseas even? Uh, we haven't done anything super huge. A lot of East Coast stuff, you know, like two week long runs. Um, we've never uh, got to tour with anyone like really big yet or anything. It's usually just like our own headliner tour where we get locals to play the shows or we tour with another local. Um, obviously, there would have been a lot more touring had COVID not happened. But, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's just what we got to do before the shutdown and stuff. But you guys are thinking about, I know you guys got some up. You guys kind of got a, a not super busy December from what I was able to see online, but you guys got some shows lined up, man, in December. So yeah, we have guys- a lot of stuff. I think we have like four or five shows in December, which is a lot for one month for us. 
Uh, yeah. Is it is it all like local to where you're at? Yeah, it's all pretty, uh, you know, like three, four hour radius kind of thing. Um, just trying to, you know, make our presence known in the local scene again. Like, hey, we're alive. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we're we're still here. Don't forget about us. We're still making music, man. So this song you guys have, Dearly, De- is the song's called Dearly Deceased, right? Yes. Okay, was this song written pre-COVID or was it written afterwards? It's funny. Um, the, the instrumental demo has actually been around for like three or four years. Uh, Aiden, our guitar player, had written it a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And it was just one of those ideas that we had for a while that we were like, this is this has got to be on the record. You know, we love it. Um, and then eventually our Patrick, our vocalist, wrote the lyrics to it. And then that's how it got the name Dearly Deceased. But the song itself has been in existence for probably a lot longer than people think. <laughs> so, what, so what was the song called before? Just song? <laughs> Just like, the song was, was Dark Side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> finally, the singer wrote a song to it. And why did you guys find Is there a reason why he finally decided to write lyrics to it? Or was it just kind of something that was put in the back burner? And you guys like, dude, fucking write something to this <laughs> shit. This is good. Yeah. You got to go with it. Write yeah. something now or you're out of the band. Yeah, we, we always knew we wanted to use it. We, we always were uh, pretty stoked on it. And, and, you know, he he took it and he did a great job with it. That's all I can say, you know. If he didn't, I would have kicked him out of the band. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, hey, he's not here, so I could, I could say that, right? If he was here, I wouldn't have said it. I probably would have still said it if he was here. That's okay. All right, I would have still said it. All right, let's check out. Now, it's, it's a lyric video, but the lyric video, the way they make lyric videos now, it's almost just like a music video. I mean, well it's freaking good, man. Like the the way the camera angles are and and the words, you know, I'm, literally lyric videos. Sometimes they could just be the music video, and, and the, in this case, it's what it is. All right, let's check it out right now. This song is called "Dearly Deceased," and I hope I got the right song. Let's find oh, out. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs>
There you go, man. My favorite lyric. I can tell your singer about it when you tell him about it. Oh, is yeah. uh, where he says, I'd rather, what he said, I'd rather drown with the rats. Is that what he yeah. says? Yep. Dude, that is so sick, man. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like who says something like that you know i like to pick out certain lyrics in certain songs that kind of stand out and saying that is like dude that's deep bro good one like, you must really hate somebody yeah i mean well the song i don't know if you're gonna ask but you know i'll tell you the song is about you know um it's basically about people uh only caring about you after you're dead and that you know you should appreciate okay. somebody while they're alive you know what i mean that's so true man that is so true. There's a lot of that 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 does happen. And do that lyric video is so sick. You guys, yeah. you got to be super happy with it, man. Hell yeah. The guy did an amazing job. He did uh, the Milwaukee video, too, if you've seen that. It's also a lyric video. Did he, like, send you the video as he's doing it or just say, here's what I did for you guys and I hope you like it? Yeah, he shows us a couple stills, a couple mm-hmm. still shots. And he's like, hey, do you like this setting and stuff? And we're like, yeah, you know, and then. We didn't even have to really give him any notes. I think there was maybe a couple words that were wrong that we had to fix. But as for like the the video and like the visuals, we were really happy with it. It really fit the tone for what we wanted. So yeah, how much something like that? I mean, if you don't mind me asking, how much does something like that cost? Like, is it super? I mean, it's obviously cheaper than a music video. Yeah, I mean, it's it actually wasn't bad. He charged us about five hundred. Um, nice. So you know that, that's pretty affordable between you know three or four guys. So yeah, because you guys are you guys are a four piece band, right? Yes. Yeah. And what, what, what's the latest change up with the band? He's like, who's like the newest member? I guess what well, technically me and the vocalist joined at the same time. Um, oh, we are currently in a situation where we do not have a permanent drummer. It's we're just kind of rolling with we have like we're rotating fill ins for now. OK, um, but we do have somebody who we're talking to who will probably be brought on board here pretty soon. Um, but no announcements yet. <laughs> have you gone on Craigslist to find oh, your yeah. have you gone on Craigslist? <laughs> It's uh, it's pretty tough, you know, like finding a drummer who can play our stuff is it's pretty demanding, you know, because all the the fast kicks and whatnot, you know, you got to be pretty right. accurate. So you know, we'll make sure we, we pick the right person who vibes with us while we're on the road and can also play really well. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough, tough balance. You might want to give Craigslist a chance. You might want to get a lot of guests on here. And it was one of them who's found some people on Craigslist and uh a lot of bands have actually found people on, on Craigslist, uh, but I will tell you, it has to be hard. I don't know how big of a city you live in or how close you are to bigger cities, but not only finding someone who can play your music that you vibe with, but at the same time, they have to be dedicated. Absolutely. You know? and, yep. that, those, and, and those three things right there are, are, are not very easy to find. Some people get lucky and find it right away. But I would assume for most people, they probably got to search search for it. But someone's out there, and you guys got someone in mind, so hopefully he works out for you guys, man. That'd be awesome. Yeah, thank you. It's definitely – it's a lot of trust, you know, and a lot of – you know, you got to give them uh, – we, we don't like to jump the gun and just uh, throw people into the band because obviously it means a lot to us. You know, we want to make sure that they are dedicated, like you said. Right. Did, you know, did you know the singer prior to joining um, If Not For Me? I did. I've played. Uh, I've played with his old band before a couple of times, and he's filled in for one of my old bands before. So okay. I actually did have a pretty good relationship with Patrick. Yeah, that's why you guys don't talk about prior to 2018 because you and the singer both joined around the same time. So pretty much it's a whole different band. At, at you know when that happens. Yeah, it was basically like a rebrand without rebranding. Right, right, right. Yeah. So the name was still the same, but you guys still rebranded, right? Is that correct? Yeah, basically. Okay. So they said, hey, if you don't like the band name, fuck off. This is uh, our band, and we're allowing you in it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you guys- Go ahead. What made you, in particular, want to get into music in the first place? Oh, um, I was just always really passionate about uh, heavy music ever since I was younger. I was... I was like 13. I, uh, I got really into Linkin Park. That was the first band mm-hmm. that made me like, oh my God, this is awesome. I have to do this. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I've always been an artist. I've always been in art, but it was a lot of, you know, drawing and stuff for me when I was younger. And then um, my, uh, my mom couldn't really ever afford to get me like an instrument. So fortunately I had a neighbor who's like this old war vet kind of dude who had a guitar and an amp and he was nice enough to give it to me. And that's how I kind of got awesome. to art, you know, out of the kindness out of somebody else. And here I am, you know, I- I'm still loving it. 
<laughs> that's so cool, dude. Without that, you might not even be doing the music that you're doing right now, man. That's super exactly, cool story. Yeah. It was meant to be. Yeah, <laughs> it was meant to be. Do you guys have now? When it comes to, because I, I know you guys have. Is it next Friday? Another song that you guys are releasing? I believe it is. It's on the third. I'm not sure if that's next Friday, but. Yes, the third is Friday. The third is next Friday. I saw it on Facebook, so I know it's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it on the internet. So no, it's not for the band I posted it. So so next Thursday, and the song is called Do you know what the name of the, I know the name of the song? Do you know the, do you know it? Too far gone. It is that is I, I was testing you to see if you're really in the band. No. So too, too far gone comes out next Friday. Are you guys doing a music video for that, a lyric video for it, or is it just gonna be uh streaming on the audios uh unfortunately it, it is a video but it is just like a streaming video with like the album on it and it's kind of moving around a little but not, nothing crazy for this one we uh we do have some uh music videos coming that are pretty high production that we're stoked about i know you guys are you guys waiting for 2022 uh before you like do you guys have like a i guess like a set release date for certain things in 2022 you know which is just a month and a week away, I guess. Yeah, so far, every uh, release and the record is all planned out. So everything is in motion. <laughs> it is just a matter of time of waiting. Does your record label help you guys out with that? Like, yeah, because like, I know, like, for me, and I've said this before, like, I, I, I'm not good at waiting to release stuff. I'm learning to be better at it. Yeah. Um, but is it like, if you know you got something, like, so good, you know people are going to love it, is it hard, like, to anticipate like the wait, like a kid waiting for to open the Christmas presents. It can be, yeah. Obviously, we've been. Uh, these songs got recorded in 2019, so we've been oh damn for a little bit, you know. So it is exciting to finally get it out. But um, as much as we would love to dro- just drop stuff, it's almost career suicide nowadays because you got to have the right promotion and it's got to be the right time because if nobody hears it, you've just wasted a bunch of time and money. You know what I mean? So we just want to make sure everything gets done right. People hear the stuff. People like the stuff. You know what I mean? That's what's most important to us. Right. Yeah. Uh, waiting if it need, if, if, if need be, you know what I mean? Is there a reason why you're just doing um, singles right now instead of an album? Um, mostly because we went dark for so long. So we have to release a large amount of signals, singles to like continually build up the band again. Mm-hmm. So we're in a comfortable enough spot. So when we release the record, hopefully we can, uh, you know, get more uh, playlists, you know, maybe some better show offers, a couple tour offers and stuff. Um, yeah. Sharon says you guys, you guys have a plan um, going before, before COVID then after COVID playing concerts. I, you know, I, I don't know what your fan base is like at the concerts that you guys play, but have you noticed uh, a smaller crowd or a larger crowd or have you noticed any any kind of difference at all um, when it comes to the audience watching you guys play your shows? Um, I'd say, I mean, after COVID, we, we've had some pretty, pretty awesome shows that have been pretty filled. But that's to be expected. You know, people are finally being able to go out again. But um, even before COVID, we have had really good shows, especially in our in our area. Um, people people like to come out. People like to see us. Um it feels great. It's nice. You know, people mosh, people sing along, you know. Isn't it so cool when you see people moshing when you're up on, like, doesn't the energy just kind of, like, pull you into the crowd even, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you get, it's like, like a what, yeah, so what, if the, what if the crowd's just, like, standing there, and you guys are, like, because I saw, you know, I read, you guys had, like, a dynamic stage, stage presence, so, so, that means you guys probably move around a lot and shit like that, yep. right? What if you're moving around, and, like, everyone's just standing there watching? I, it, does, suck? it does feel we and I've been in that situation and it's like it, it does kind of suck, but at the end of the day, you know, you still want to give people that same performance, you still give that same energy, you know. You have to no matter what, you know what I mean? Because you know, the vibes if the vibe's weird, you know, that does suck, but you gotta push through it because at the end of the day, somebody there is gonna appreciate it. So that's right. Have things ever gotten out of control in the market? Oh, I can't say that for this band, no, but um, <laughs> yeah, thankfully people have been pretty uh, pretty respectful in our pits. We're not exactly a hardcore band or anything, so people aren't, you know, thrown down the whole time, but, you know, we, we do get some moshing. 
Dude, I did, I did, I did want to say, man, one thing I love about your guys' songs is, and this song in particular that we just heard, is not only is there a great screaming, but the melody and just the, the vocal range of your singer also. Like, I love the sound of screaming with singing. Some bands just scream, some bands just sing. For your guys' style, I didn't expect singing, honestly. Yeah. And when I heard it, I was like, yeah. That's odd because it just makes you like it kind of gives me goosebumps a little bit because I, I love that particular sound. Yeah, Patrick is a an amazing vocalist. He is we're very blessed to have him. He is such a great singer, and pe- be prepared to hear more singing on new stuff because we really want to showcase that a bit more. Um, obviously, we, we still are going to keep writing heavy songs, and you know the screen oh, yeah. will be there, but um, we really we really want to push his singing abilities because he is fantastic. That's awesome, man. Let's talk about your website. And your merchandise. Cool. It's not for me.com, right? Yes. <laughs> Easy. It's so, uh, I said it's not for me. I meant if not for me. See, no one even corrected me. I saw Ava <laughs> looking at me like, you idiot. <laughs> and then Zach's over here didn't even say anything either. Thanks, man. For <laughs> letting me look like a dumbass. If not for me.com. It's just easier to say it's not for me. If not for me. Yeah, sometimes it's a mispronunciation. Sometimes people genuinely say it wrong. I can't tell anymore. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's probably hard to tell if someone says it's not or if not. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I saw Ava's look. I saw your look. Don't worry about it. I get a source. She's like, mm-mm. mm-mm. It's like the Dishwalla oh. incident. Huh? Yeah, I know. We had Dishwalla on and I said the name of their song wrong. Oh. <laughs> it's called what's called Counting Blue Cars, right? Yeah, and, it's I, and a, I said chasing blue cars. Yeah. Well, and then no one corrected me then either. So it is what it is. All right. So if not for me dot com, easy to remember. You guys got merchandise on there, right? Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think we do. Actually, we might. Um, you guys have. You guys have merchandise though, don't you? Yes, uh, we do. Um, Chance is a mistake. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> we make lots of mistakes. Yeah, I know. Pretty soon, we Fiorio will be selling our merch online. Um, I do. I don't. We might. I haven't been on that website in a really long time. Truthfully, on your own. <laughs> yeah, I mean, on your own. I don't go to my website either. You know, honestly, <laughs> I go every now and again just to make sure it's still active. Yeah, um, <laughs> but as far as I know, no, we don't have. We're not selling any like uh, merch online other than uh, like our digital music. Um, okay, but okay. Fiorio will be getting some merch up on their site for us pretty soon here so you know what's weird is i went there to look up your 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 most recent shows mm-hmm. and um I, on my on my phone i i couldn't click that link for upcoming tours or shows but then on on the actual computer i was able to get to it so okay that's just the way the internet works sometimes i don't know can't yeah. really explain that because it goes back and forth anyways man is there anything else that you want to let everyone know before we got you off here anything I know we talked about your upcoming songs and 2022 future shows you got lined up, which is probably going to be awesome. And any big tours lined up, I guess, anything like set that you know about coming up soon? Uh, Nothing massive other than our album release tour, which is supposed to happen late February into March. So be on the lookout for those dates. They should be announced here pretty soon. That is exciting. Ava, anything else? Um, is there anything uh, in the near future that you're looking forward to specifically in the band? Just getting the record out, seeing how it does. Hopefully, you know, or hopefully it does really well and, you know, gets us in a better position for the next release. That's, you know, really the goal here, just building the band, trying to get better offers. So, you know, hopefully next time I'm here, I do have some <laughs> cool tour offers we can talk about. But um, That'd be awesome. We're working towards it. So, you know, that is that is my goal. And what I'm looking forward to is just, you know, getting those numbers up, getting more fans, you know, playing shows, just doing the band stuff, you know. Right on, man. Well, whenever you get more content, you're always allowed to come back on here, man. I appreciate you so much. And I want to let everybody out there know, have a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family. Even if you hate them, sometimes you got to love them because when you're gone, you're going to miss them. So cherish them 100%. That's all I got. Check out www.theloudspot.net, patreon.com forward slash the loud spot. We three dollars a month really does help us out. Go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel, and once again, happy Thanksgiving. Peace out, rock on, and much love. Bye. This is the loud spot outro by nothing short of tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. 
Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? The fucking short of tragic have his back again. Does everything that's good really have to end? A pin post has a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to click the like and share button. Don't forget to go to our YouTube and subscribe. If you want to listen to our audio and pick up some cool merch, go to www.theloudspot.net. Peace out, rock on, much love.